Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing, as always. Gemma is a little bit of a quandary for me because let me take you back on a little story about my good girl, Gemma, here. Of course, we bought her about four months ago, super tame. Ghost reticulated python, absolutely incredible. And then she wouldn't eat. And I was worried about why isn't she eating? She was huge. When we got her, she took a big poop, so I knew she was eating. I tried rabbits, I tried pigs, I tried rats. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I thought, well, maybe she just needs to calm down a little bit and get used to her new environment, right? And so no big deal. Then about two months ago, walked by the cage, and I noticed she had some swelling in her midsection. That typically is like gearing up for an ovulation. Immediately, I decided, let's go ahead and throw night Fury in, my motley golden child retic, that would be an amazing pairing. And sure enough, he bred her right away. I mean, was right on it breeding her. Then I thought, we're in business. She's growing follicles. She's gonna have an ovulation. She's gonna have eggs. We're gonna have all these amazing babies. Then she went into shed, which blew me away because I'm like, what the heck is going on with this shed thing? Because obviously the shed would either be pre-ovulation shed. And I know I'm trying not to confuse you guys, but basically a shed like that is gonna be a pre-ovulation shed or pre-lay shed. So sure enough, we took out the ultrasound and we ultrasound her and we saw some giant follicles right in her midsection. And as a matter of fact, right about that time, she almost attacked me because she changed from being this beautiful, sweet animal to having the hormones going crazy jumping out at me, almost biting me, and then I was like, what is going on with my girl Gemma? And I thought, all right, we're on the right path, right? She shed out, put Night Fury in again, didn't want to breed her, put him in again, didn't want to breed her. That tells me that maybe she was gravid and he no longer had the hormones for follicle growth and that maybe she was already gravid, which meant I might have missed her, right? And then she was looking pretty big and I'm thinking, all right, she's gonna either lay good eggs or she's gonna lay bad eggs, not 100% sure. Then the last couple days, I've been walking by her cage and she looks a little bit thinner, right? She doesn't look as big. So I have to take Gem out, go get the ultrasound, and what we wanna do is find out is there any follicles in that midsection there or are the eggs, after they drop out of the ovaries and into the oviduct, they actually become fertilized or shelled eggs, either fertile or infertile, are they all the way down to her tail? Or what's going on? Or did she reabsorb and she's got nothing happening? I don't know what's going on. So let's go ahead and get my girl out of here, get her over, do some ultrasounding with her, and figure out what the heck is going on. Because even after 30 something years of breeding snakes, I'm actually confused and don't know what's happening with my giant snake, Gemma. And you can see she's kind of went back to being like a super tame snake. You know, she was kind of crazy, and then all of a sudden she just kind of calmed down. Now, she does have a little bit of swelling, there's no doubt about it, but she just doesn't look as fat as I would have expected a big gravid reticulated python to look. Now, she could still be three, four weeks away from laying eggs, which means that she could still be growing, right? The eggs could be growing inside of her, but I just don't know what's going on. I think the only way I could tell is to get her out and ultrasound her and find out where those eggs are. Now, with the ultrasound, I'm not gonna be able to tell if they're fertile or not fertile, but I'll at least be able to tell if the eggs are dropped out of the ovaries or if she's reabsorbed her eggs. Whew, she's a big girl, but she is so docile. I mean, what a great snake. So I'm gonna, just for myself, slowly bring her over. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna drag her on the ground too much and hurt her, so I gotta be really gentle with her, right? I'm already tired out. No gym time for me today. By the way, I did go to the gym yesterday and did legs of all things. Bad day to do that, right? Not good. Okay. Uh, and I tell you what, when you're saying, Brian, you're out of shape. Number one, yeah, I am kind of out of shape. But number two, you come and try to do this. I'm telling you, it's not as easy as you think. Every person that comes in that handles a big snake with me goes, now I know why you're out of breath after 30 seconds. These guys are giants. We got Gem on the floor here. Gonna get the ultrasound ready. And then we'll go ahead and we'll scan her up and figure out what's going on. Again, right here is where we're gonna see the initial follicles. I've gotta just go ahead and get her over here. And we just wanna see, are they still there? Definitely seeing some follicles. Need some little more goo on this because she's such a big girl. But we're definitely seeing some follicles there. It's a little harder to do by myself trying to wrangle her. But now I'm gonna see if I have, yep. You can see there's big eggs, but you know what? These are a lot of what I normally would say look phantom. But it could just be that they've dropped down. So, so far down there, we're seeing eggs. 
and sure enough, we're seeing eggs all the way down here. So essentially what's happening is we're seeing that eggs have dropped from her ovaries into the oviduct. That's basically when they would call it sufficient ovulation, where they're actually down here. Now those eggs are basically calcified, and they are what they are. They're either fertilized or they're not fertilized, right? So now at least we know that she's actually gravid. Although, like I said, some of those eggs looked a little phantomed out. What I mean by that is when they phantom out, is when they basically didn't get fertilized and the female is starting to reabsorb those eggs. I wish I see really crisp lines on them. That whiter look in the ultrasound is, can be either phantom or can still be early stage of kind of developing through, right? So she could still be laying a clutch of eggs. We definitely have something going on. Now what I can do is I can offer her food this coming up week. And if she eats, then I know for sure she is definitely grabbing. And I think she's getting away on us here. Where's she going? Oh, you got the fish, Bob? No, girl. Look at how giant that snake is right there. I mean, that is a big snake and an absolutely beautiful snake. So I guess I'm kind of answering the questions, right? We know she's gravid. She might be reabsorbing her eggs. And if she eats, then the eggs will just kind of disappear, which is kind of a weird thing. We, you know, we used to call it reabsorption, but you know, then there's no like technical way an animal could reabsorb uh, actual mass in the oviduct because it's not in the stomach, but yet we see it happening a lot, right? I've seen it at least once or twice a year, we'll have a gravid ball python that just the eggs just kind of go away. They reabsorb. That could be happening. Now, the fact that she's been bred a couple times by night fairy would make me think she wouldn't reabsorb because usually reabsorption happens from females that haven't got any fertile sperm in them. We've seen that with night fairy, so I don't know. I mean, still a little bit unsure, but uh, now I think we're just gonna have to wait for eggs and they're either gonna be fertile or they're gonna be unfertile. But the one thing I am very happy about is that my girl Gemma went back to being an absolutely beautiful animal and she's not that monster she was just that one day. One day, I opened up her cage and she just was a different animal. I mean, completely different. I mean, as soon as I touched her, she was like, she just came up on me. You can see now she's back to her old self, which is interesting, right? Because if she is gravid, you wouldn't think, you know, that she would go back to being super tame. Maybe she'd be protective as a mama or something like that, but nope. She's herself, like I mean, love her, and I wish we could pull her out because that was the whole reason for getting her, right? Not to breed her, but to actually pull her out and let kids have this interaction with her. Now the downside is, is if she's gravid, which she appears to be, I can't really pull her out because having overhandling is actually bad. We don't want her to get egg bound or have any kind of issues with pregnancy, right? So unfortunately, for the next month or so, until she deposits whatever she's gonna deposit, good eggs, bad eggs, or reabsorb the eggs, whatever she's gonna do, she's gonna have to be kind of sequestered back home, unfortunately but we will try to feed her next week and if she does feed then we know that reabsorption is actually happening which is doubtful I highly doubt that's gonna happen so uh, yeah so there it is we kind of are answering our questions and uh, we're learning right along with one another I hope the reptile army is doing well today as a matter of fact we have a new drop which is actually an old drop actually what we call a classic drop so we actually have it right now you can go over to reptilearmy.com and get some of the classic designs that you guys wanted from before that maybe we didn't have anymore so that just dropped so go Go check that out at reptilearmy.com and keep in mind about a week week and a half from now we got the christmas drop coming so if you want to wear some cool reptile army christmas holiday gear we've got it coming there's some bangers in there make sure to check out reptilearmy.com and from one giant snake to another giant snake hi ivy what are you doing girl you are so amazing and i know she wants to come out and say hi dad what are you doing she just wants to always come out and say hi to me she's such an amazing snake and you guys know I love my anacondas. I mean, certainly one of my favorite snakes that I've ever dealt with in my entire life. I mean, again, you just don't see a snake that acts like a puppy dog or something and comes out and says hi to you and wants to see around you. But I will say one thing that they are messy snakes. If you're ever deciding to get an anaconda like my girl Ivy or Ariana or Jazz, they are amazing. And the experience you can have with them, like this girl here, and I'm about to go in the cage, you'll see she'll be like, hey dad, what are you doing? It's amazing. But man, are they dirty. When we fed all three of our giant anacondas at the same time, we have now had to clean their enclosure at least once a day, every day for the last five or six days, sometimes twice a day. And sure enough, we got some more poop in it. I just cleaned them out last night and uh, here we go again, more poop. So I gotta go in there and get the Pondo back and clean it out again. And uh, that's just part of keeping anacondas. Amazing snakes, absolutely one of the best snakes ever ever i've worked with but boy oh boy do they put you through work so think about that if you ever decide you want to get an anaconda
And that's what it takes to take care of anacondas, daily work. I mean, that's just the way it is, but I love them. And fortunately, we have the equipment and the enclosure and everything else that makes our job a little bit more simple, but there's still a lot of maintenance involved to keep this thing looking absolutely incredible. Again, great animals. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from getting one, but I'm telling you, they are a lot of work. They are messy. So now let's just go ahead and let this water fill up. It should look beautiful here within the next hour. Kind of cool to catch this in the act and that's of course Ben and Jerry starting to shed and you can see basically why they shed a little bit wonky right it's because one head is off of course Ben heads is off right now but Jerry's isn't well the problem is is there's a Y there right with the normal snake it's like a tube right that they can just kind of roll right out with this that Y restricts the ability for it to go so they have to break the skin in that Y for Jerry to actually shed its head off and then the rest of the body can come right out but it's definitely the first time I've seen it to where Ben's head is out and Jerry's head is in. Obviously they'll both shed today. It's going to be interesting to kind of keep the progress through the day to see how they are going. I just thought it was an interesting thing to actually be able to see and share with you guys that one of the snake heads is actually out of shed and one of the snake heads is still in the shed. Just really wild animal. Not every animal can come out here at the Reptarium. Obviously there's some animals that are just a little bit tricky and stuff like that, but there are the majority of the animals do come out and there are a handful of things that I feel are really underappreciated and hardly ever taken out. And Gene here, the Woma Python happens to be one of them. It's just an amazingly cool animal from Australia and you honestly hardly ever see it come out No one hardly ever wants it to come out just because maybe they don't think it can or whatever the case is So I'm going to give you a list of things if you ever come to the Reptarium You've got to experience that don't get experienced too often and Gene is definitely the first one We have a whole bunch of frogs here at the Reptarium as well that don't really hardly ever come out for some reason And a lot of them can you know there are certain frogs that obviously you don't take out You know like I say dart frogs obviously are one of them and other frogs that are kind of delicate but we don't really keep the ones that you can't take out. We keep the ones that you actually could take out. Now you still have to keep it within reason. You know, there are some animals here where we couldn't take them out all the time because they would get overstressed and stuff like that. But the Vietnamese mossy frogs are so cool. And I can't remember the last time anyone asked to see one of these guys. I mean, take a look at that animal. It is absolutely ridiculous. Tons of people actually take out the lychee geckos, which I don't blame them because they're obviously the giant geckos, the largest gecko on the planet. But this comes from the same area and it's actually a Chihua gecko. Looks a lot different, more mossy and more interesting color and they're absolutely incredible to take out. You know, for a smaller kid or something like that, it'd be cool to hold something like this rather than Reptar that's so large, right? So the Chihua geckos don't get nearly the love they should because they are absolutely ridiculous. This is just a cool snake. This is a red Dominican mountain boa. It's called Mr. Nubbins and again, it's an awesome snake, you know. It may look a little intimidating and maybe that's why people are like, I don't know if I want to take that out, maybe it'd bite. But we wouldn't take anything out that's going to bite you. There's no doubt about that. And Mr. Nubbins is an absolute gentleman and just an unusual animal that you don't see around hardly ever. And to be able to get an experience to hold them is something that everyone should take advantage of when they come to the Reptarium. I wouldn't say Oz the Mandarin Rat Snake never comes out because every night we take it out a couple times. But you got to remember we have five hours when we're opening. So five different groups of people are coming through. And I'd be honest with you, if I was coming to a reptile zoo and had an opportunity to hold something as unusual as a mandarin, and rat snake that you just don't see around too often, I would definitely take advantage of that. So this guy should come out probably five times a night to be totally honest with you, but I would say maybe once or twice a night someone actually acts to see him. It's just a cool, cool snake. He just is a hypo Honduran milk snake and is absolutely incredible. This actually was donated to us about a year and a half ago by a guy that did educational shows and he actually used peaches all the time. So it came here already super used to being handled. So it's absolutely placid as can be and so super super friendly and it's weird that it doesn't come out more often to be honest with you look at the color on it look how cool it is I mean, that's just an awesome looking snake and again it does come out occasionally but not nearly as often as I'd like to see people do it so these are just a handful of animals that I think should come out all the time and if you ever make it to the Reptarium don't lose the opportunity to have time with these animals because they are absolutely awesome hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did do me a favor right over here happens to be a playlist you can find some more videos if you'd like to watch those it would help me out you know what else would help me out on this side right over here you can hit that subscription button turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you in the next one